Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Molnar here. How's everybody getting along? Well, we've got a major storm that's going to change the weather pattern for the next couple weeks. Yeah, it's going to disrupt everything. It's going to bring severe weather from the central and eastern part of the Mississippi and Ohio River area. And then head up to the northeast. We might have some severe weather along the east coast come this weekend with some minor flooding problems as well. But here, as you can see behind this frontal boundary, this big old low pressure system forms into this massive upper low, essentially. And what you have here across the lakes in the northeast for most of next week is a very unsettled pattern at much cooler temperatures. So taking a look at our Friday, the outlook for severe weather doesn't look as bad. We have a, a marginal risk across parts of eastern Texas, uh, Louisiana, and Mississippi, and up here into parts of the Ohio Valley. There'll be two areas, you know, marginal. We still have the threat of damaging wind, large hail, isolated tornadoes, also up into parts of Erie, Buffalo, Rochester, New York, just east of Cleveland and Columbus. All right, so as we head into Saturday here, the big area is going to be here across parts of the southeast, you know, from Savannah, Charleston, Wilmington. We're going to see that slight risk of severe weather here up and down the southeast coast. And into parts of Florida, you will see a marginal risk as well. But there's a part that I'm a little bit in disagreement here, and I'm going to show you here as we head throughout the video. I actually think we could actually extend this marginal risk all the way up into eastern New York, eastern Pennsylvania, parts of New Jersey, especially Saturday evening in this area. We could actually see some pretty strong thunderstorms as a squall line develops. So the big story, too, of these next several days is going to be precipitation amounts. Yes, we see a general one to two inches as we go into the weekend up through parts of the northeast. Maybe locally higher amounts, you know, this is some beneficial rain. But as we stretch through cro across parts of the south here, you can see, look what is going on here. There is some heavy rain. And next week, look at this. We add on top of that, we could be seeing some areas in these red zones, as you can see up here, approach six, seven, maybe eight inches of rain. And what on earth is going on with our temperatures the next several days? A look at this as we head later into the weekend. These are the overnight lows as we head into Sunday morning. Look at this. We could be seeing the freezing line down here into portions of parts of the Ohio Valley into the northeast. And as we continue in time here, what exactly is going to happen? Is this going to be a cold week? You can see, look at that. That is Monday morning. That is some pretty cold air here in Trents into parts of the Appalachians, the Ohio Valley. We'll get into the details of just how cold it's going to get. And as we take a look at our surface-based cape analysis here, food for thunderstorms. As we head throughout the day on Friday, especially in the evening, along the Gulf Coast, all the way up into parts of Ohio and the Northeast, this is exactly where we're seeing enough cape here on the order of 500 to as much as 1,000 joules per kilogram to get some of these thunderstorms developing up, up through Ohio. And that kind of wanes a little bit as we head on into, look at this though, Saturday, as I said before, we have enough cape here carolinas a thousand to two thousand joules per kilogram and we even have 500 joules per kilogram up here in the parts of the mid-atlantic h triple r our trusty future radar here essentially yeah this is going to be ongoing severe weather throughout thursday night into early friday morning across parts of eastern texas and the Mississippi River Valley over towards Little Rock. So yeah, continued damaging wind, large hail, tornado threat continuing. Yeah, look at this over towards just west of Houston, all the way up to just west of Little Rock, Memphis. You're getting in on the act of it. And you know, yeah, got some frisky thunderstorms up towards the state of Michigan as well. So watch out for that. We're okay here in the Northeast. Maybe a few stray showers or thunder showers here into western New York by this time. But let's actually just kick this along here and we'll see... Look at as we go throughout 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., this big complex of thunderstorms heads out over the Gulf. So, you know, this time of year, we got to watch out for thunderstorms that do this because we could get some sort of subtropical storm out of this if they do persist. At this point, I don't think that's going to happen. But look at this all night long into the early morning hours. We got this band of showers and thunderstorms. And essentially what's going to start happening here, you can see as we put this into motion, it's going to start stalling a little bit here towards the Gulf Coast. This big, look at this. This is like an area of low pressure starting to form here across parts of the North Central Gulf. And that's going to be feeding moisture all the way up this frontal boundary into the Ohio Valley. Now, while let's watch this unfold here as we go throughout Friday. Yes, we will have the chance of strong to severe thunderstorms here 
Um, this is 1 p.m. on Friday, the 21st here. So essentially here, once this band passes here, you're going to have some more stray cells start to develop back here in the daytime heating. That'll bring some damaging wind large hail. It's not going to be a widespread severe weather outbreak here. But I just want to make you aware there's going to be some areas where the thunderstorm action could get a little frisky. Here in eastern Ohio, this is by 3 p.m. Look at this, east of Cleveland towards Youngstown. Definitely watch out for large hail, damaging winds, and down here across parts of the deep south. And as we continue to kick this 4 p.m., 5 p.m., yeah, you can see the thunderstorms organizing, especially from northern part of Louisiana up to Memphis Western Tennessee here, Western Kentucky, and look at this. We could have some big thunder boomers up towards Erie, Pennsylvania, so watch out for some strong to severe thunderstorms, even over towards South Central Pennsylvania, just east of Altoona here, State College area. Please watch out for that, because some of these could get a little frisky. This is interesting that this is happening over the Gulf of Mexico. You know, these thunderstorm complexes this time of year definitely have to be watched, especially with the higher sea surface temperatures as of late. So watch this as we continue to put this into motion, 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Yeah, you can essentially see this. There's some strong thunderstorms just north of New Orleans. And we can literally follow, follow the stream of moisture up this frontal boundary here up into eastern Ohio, northwestern Pennsylvania. And look at this. We're actually getting some shower and thunderstorm activity over towards the Binghamton, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton area as well. So, yeah, this is going to be a washout weekend. Look at Cleveland up there by 11 p.m. And this is going to bring this slug of moisture. Look at this, the initial slug of moisture coming up towards eastern Ohio. Another uh, thunderstorm line forming right along this uh the secondary front that's uh, behind it. So take a look at this as we continue throughout 2 a.m. early Saturday morning. Look at this. Yeah, Ohio is just getting dumped on here with lots of rain. That continues all the way down to the south here. Look at Atlanta, Georgia, to the panhandle of Florida. Even some big thunderstorms across the outer banks of North Carolina here. And look at that. We can follow that thunderstorm line, showers and thunderstorms, all the way up the Appalachians to western Pennsylvania as you're waking up at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. Look at this. Yeah. You may get some outdoor uh, things done here across the northeast because this is 11 a.m. Things are really going to start to pop, you know, after noon here. So we're picking up here with the NAM 3-kilometer future radar. Uh, take a look at this. Yeah, so the Carolinas... All the way down up the coastline here into the Appalachians. Look at this. 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m. Yeah, we actually start forming a pretty big squall line here. So I would not be surprised, you know, as we get into eastern Pennsylvania, parts of the nation's capital, parts of the eastern Carolinas here in eastern Georgia. We could see some severe thunderstorms form out of this. Damaging wind, large hail. Look at that. Even some cells developing here back in Ohio. Look at this. This could be pretty decent. Uh, you know, the main threat's going to be some really heavy rain out of these because, you know, they'll be slowing down as they head to the east here. But watch this. Watch this unfold here. I'll show you the timeline. We just have a few more frames. This is 6 p.m., 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Look at it. Moves right through the Harrisburg area. This is going to be big. So look at we can follow this line all the way down the coastline here. So it's going to be pretty intense up here from eastern Virginia to eastern Pennsylvania and the parts of upstate New York's southern tier here. Look at this. And it fills into Syracuse, the I-81 corridor. Look at this. 9 p.m. on Saturday evening. If you got any plans, it looks like a total washout here Saturday evening. Look at this. 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Look at this. Heading through New Jersey, the Catskills, Poconos, midnight. Look at that. Just back it up one frame. It does start to weaken in parts of the Hudson Valley here down through New York City by 1 a.m., but you'll be definitely be getting some beneficial rain here. All right, so as we continue on here with your synoptic weather pattern here. So there's that weekend storm. See it head on to the northeast. I showed you on the mesoscale bottles. Definitely in agreement at this point. Yeah, that's uh, 8 p.m. Saturday evening. GFS is a little bit quicker here. That is some good news. You know, it'll lessen the chances of flood. There's the upper level low that pretty much forms across the Great Lakes Northeast. We have our next system here forming across the Southern Plains. So this is going to be the trouble areas as we continue into next week. This is uh, the 24th. So we're getting into Monday here. Look at this. Yeah, it's going to be some real slow go of it here in the parts of the Deep South. This is where you're going to get a lion's share of your precipitation, your heavy rain, 
And look at that. Yeah, this is heading towards the 26th as we get towards next Wednesday. Yeah, this is going to be some pretty significant rain. I am a bit concerned about some flooding in this area. As we continue to put this into motion, you can see the big story is going to be flooding rains. And that tries to actually go up the coastline a little bit. So this time of year... You know, I have to I hate to say this, but this is actually looking more like a winter time pattern here than it is closer to springtime. So, you know, we see this again and again in the springtime. Look at that. That looks like a nor'easter just kind of bombing out here across North Carolina. All right, so the upper level flow here of the anomalies of pressures. Yeah, this gives us a good idea of the troughs and ridges. Look at this. As we head throughout the weekend into next week, this trough is just going to keep digging deeper and deeper, and this helps a series of troughs, you know, around the southern periphery of it kick across the south to create this massive flooding problem across the south. And look what we got here. This upper level low is just going to keep things pinwheeling around it like this. All right, as we take a look at the European model here, it's always good to get an idea of what's going on. It gives us the surface-based analysis here, the best. Here's that low pressure that's forming later Friday afternoon. You can see the moisture streaming out ahead of it with an upper-level low pretty much holding back, keeping some light snow across parts of Minnesota. You can see we basically have two lows that form here, one in the Ohio Valley, one across the Deep South. The one up here in the Ohio Valley becomes the primary and only low at this point. And you can see you've got some moisture here on the backside, and that's out ahead of it here. That's where we're going to see the instability form. Look at that. Is that is that low pressure moves into uh, Ontario, Canada? Look what forms here. This is a line of very heavy rain and thunderstorms. So we could see some damaging wind, large hail, and some flooding. You know, it's not going to be widespread flooding problem, but you can see how that moves through the northeast here on this is Sunday morning, so the European has slowed down a bit. I will show you those rainfall amounts momentarily here, and look at here across South Texas. This is another area. There's going to be a low-pressure system coming off the Mexican coastline here, and that, my friends, is going to push out into the Gulf, and we'll have to keep an eye on that. Here across the northeast, we seem to have a secondary low trying to form here. And it kind of forms like a mini nor'easter. You can't call it a full-blown nor'easter. It's not strong enough. But it will be a pesky thing that hangs out a lot of next week. And look what's heading out over the Gulf here. Yeah, this is an interesting feature. The European model is a bit more bullish on this thing. So we'll have to keep an eye on it and see if it might actually hold on and turn into something subtropical for a brief time. But by that point, you know, it is kicking on out. But look at we have an area of high pressure trying to build in here across the lakes. It doesn't have much success. You can see the upper low, this trough just hanging out here across the northeast. And we're going to have ripples of disturbances ride around it and pinwheel. Now, look at this. This is our next big storm here across parts of the Rocky Mountains. That's going to be bringing some severe weather thunderstorms and there's going to be this flooding threat down here across parts of the south next week too as we get into mid to late week. This is Wednesday by the way and look at that another area of thunderstorms breaks off one here across the northern Gulf and the Gulf Coast states and then right out over the central Gulf so please keep an eye out here uh, I will have pre be providing tropical updates throughout the week as well. This turns into a big gully washer, one big gully washer that turns into what looks like a nor'easter here, more reminiscent of a uh, wintertime rather than spring. Tri our double barrel high up here into parts of the lakes in the Ohio Valley, and look at our next storm here across Texas. Severe weather is likely. This nor'easter doesn't look like it's going to head up into the northeast. That's good news because, you know, it's kind of head out to sea, although you could use the rain here in the mid-Atlantic. I will say that much. And look at that next thunderstorm complex going out over the Gulf. Plenty of opportunities for some subtropical development here. We'll keep an eye on it. you noticing a theme here. We're just going to ride these low pressures like this. Look at this. This next one makes it a little bit further to the north. Up into the central Appalachians, look at our next one is reloading out here over the Colorado low area. And look at that as we head towards Sunday, April 30th. This one actually manages to get some moisture. Yeah, just in time for the weekend, you knew it was coming in our next storm right behind it. So total liquid equivalent precipitation will take it through, let's see, Saturday here. So the first phase of the storm, it will be mainly across parts of the eastern plains here, parts of eastern Texas, all the way to parts of the western Ohio Valley here. So this is through about Saturday sunrise. So let's kick this out 
the rest of the weekend. Look at that. I'll be zooming into the northeast momentarily. Look at that area of heavy rain up there. Uh, European model has started to slow this system down a little bit, so that is a little bit of concern up here in the parts of eastern New York, eastern Pennsylvania, and New England. There is a rain shadow right over New Jersey, though. That is pretty curious, to say the least here. And look at that. As we head next week, this is Friday the 28th. Look at this. This is really concerning here across parts of the south. These areas, I mean, you're racking up four to eight inches of rain pretty easily here. So as we get into the northeast here, let's see what King Euro has in store. So this is through Saturday morning. Look at this. Most of it falling into Ohio, Cleveland, all the way down to Cincinnati. Most of Ohio, you're going to get about an inch to an inch and a quarter out of this. Watch as we head through Saturday into Sunday here into Monday. Look at this. Yeah, we could be looking at some really heavy rain, especially along and east of I-81 corridor here and then heading up into parts of New England. Look at this. Western New England in particular, the European model starts to bog this down into a 2 to 3 inch with locally heavier amounts towards 4 to 5 inches. If that were to occur, there would be some localized flooding issues. So keep an eye out here as we head through next week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, don't see much rain until the next push the following weekend. But, you know, the common theme, let's just back it up here. The common theme heading through this weekend is a solid inch, you know, through much of Ohio, New York, Pennsylvania here, Virginia, these areas. And then as you get into New England, we're looking at an inch and a half to almost three inches likely. And, of course, we'll just take a look and analyze the GFS rainfall amounts here. They are a bit lighter and a bit further east here. You know, the the same idea here, though. A solid, I mean, we're looking at a solid inch here. And then up here in the parts of New England, you know, solid two to two and a half inches. And taking a look at John here, sending in his photo here on April 20th. A62 Oldham Road, Oldham, UK. Sunny and 14 degrees Celsius. Looking really nice out there, John. Cruising along on the open road. Nice blue skies, sunny skies. You can't beat that. And, you know, that's, you know, 14 degrees Celsius. That's not too bad. Um, that's, you know, heading on into the mid to upper 50. So looking pretty good. All right. So let's take a look at your tropical update here for the Atlantic. You know, there are a few areas as we head towards the end of the week. One little area that's kind of interesting is right out here just south of Bermuda. You know, I don't think it has a chance of development, but it is pretty persistent. So look at that. That is pretty interesting. You do have to watch the North Central Gulf this time of year for those tail end of the frontal boundaries. Look at the intertropical convergence zone. Yeah, it looks active, but it's too far to the south this time of year. Look at this. This is by April 24th, Monday. But see how quickly it just gets sheared apart here? And this wants to make a beeline up the coast, so essentially... What we have here is, you know, we have a few tropical waves by this point, the 27th. Look at this. This looks like the tail end of a front just washing out here. And you know what? This is the time of year that we can see some sort of development. You know, it's not uncommon to get development, you know, as early as late April, early May, especially as of late. All right. So for the Western Pacific, yeah, yeah, look at this. This is the intertropical convergence zone out here. We have two little areas. That we're going to watch here. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, Philippines up to Japan, China, not too bad at the moment. But look at that. Yeah, this could, yeah, we might have something out here by this point, but it's going to be mainly a fish storm. And as we continue in time here through the weekend into early next week, look at this. Yeah, a lot of westerlies, your season for typhoons has not begun in Japan yet or most of China. But we're getting there. Look at the Philippines going through a really nice dry time here. That, that's really nice. I really don't have much to talk about out here. So temperature-wise here, let's take a look at this. Yeah, you have a nice warm day. It's good swimming weather all the way up into New York State. Look at that into the mid to upper 80s. But you know what's coming here? I hate to rain on your parade. You know, we'll hold on to some 70s here across parts of the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast for your Saturday before that line of heavy rain and thunderstorms moves in. Look at Florida just baking here. Parts of South Texas, 
And look at southern part of Arizona here heading into the California. Yeah, this ridge is really going to start taking effect here out west. And you know what that means? Now that it's time for spring, that means a big old trough. It's time for the trough to come across the east. Most of you wanted it for snow across the east. But look at this. Temperatures will be tumbling across parts of the northeast with early highs in the 60s, tumbling through the 50s. Look at this. Monday. Look at the 50 degree line. It's all the way down like this. Look at that. So yeah, it'll be feeling pretty chilly up here across parts of the lakes and northeast as we head into Tuesday as well. Look at this. Yeah, we have this reinforcing shot of cold air. You know it's going to be heading towards the northeast later in the week. But we get a little bit of a moderating trend here. This is actually pretty decent here. 60. You know, that's a pretty popular number this time of year. Starting to bake here across the south. But you know, it actually could be a lot hotter this time of year. Extended outlook for my hometown viewers. Being to Descranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley. Take a look at this. Friday is beautiful. It will be rather warm. Look at that. 88 degrees. Saturday, we headed to 77 for a high. It is after 5 p.m. You know, after like 1 p.m., we start to get into the rain. But thunderstorms, we'll have that line of thunderstorms push through closer to later in the evening between 8 and 10 p.m. You know, we'll pick up a quick three quarters of an inch heading on into Saturday night as well. Rain into Sunday morning, probably ending around 9 a.m. We'll have some breaks of sun with some scattered showers into Monday as well. But look at that. 55 through Tuesday. But look at your overnight lows Tuesday morning. That, my friends, is a total freeze. That is bad news. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather Northeastern and Weather Eastern. Don't forget Facebook Media Mark, Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern at Susquehanna Weather for my local page. And guess what? MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com is Twitter at WeatherEastern. Don't forget, question or comment down below. Smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell button, share the video, and thanks for joining me.